Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Gambit where somehow the situation is not actually as intense as it looks. Uh, we got a dead body, a guy being held at knife point, another guy injured, someone who is accused of murder. But everyone's kind of chill about it. Alright, why are there gas masks? Mm, two gas masks, in case of a poison gas attack, I suppose. The president certainly seems to think he's at risk of assassination at all times. Wow, gas masks! I've never seen one before. I've heard plenty about them, of course. No, from a fellow thief, I presume. No, from the Jammin' Ninja, you know, my favorite kids' TV show. Princess Murasaki was getting married, but Toxic Ninja Wolfsbane showed up to lay down some sick birds. And time to tune out. Might save myself a brain cell or two. Alright, shielding next to a canary in a cage. Oh, uh, is the can the canary is there to check for poison? Poor bird. Ah, oh, she's so sweet. I want one. Did you ever see a cuter partner in crime? The partner in crime. Well, yeah, she could help me with lock picking stuff like that. Great thief has no greater ally than nature, Mr. Edgeworth. Sadly, such birds are most commonly used for detecting poisonous gases. <laughs> Wait, this one isn't actually for that, is it? Oh, it definitely is. This guy seems super paranoid. Uh, especially looking at, like, the life preserver. There's a solid circular life preserver designed to be used in case of an emergency in the water. Or rather, the sea, to be more precise. Ah, oh, the sea. I love the sea. We should go sometime. Oh, sorry, but you'll have to make that particular trip without me. Ah, oh, don't be like that. Come on, it'll be fun. We can have lobster rolls, ice cream, all the good stuff. Something tells me the sea isn't the minute for action for you, is it? <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. I'm gonna so scour the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Like, literally all of this. What is this? My first thought was, like, little flash drives, but I'm assuming that's not it. <laughs> These personal safety alarms are very colorful. It looks like they get a lot of use as well. Wait, what? <laughs> I like the president. He seems like a thoughtful guy. Buying these for his kids, maybe his wife, too. <laughs> okay. Why would they all be here if that was the case? No, these are for his own personal use. Objection, Your Honor. It is simply not possible for one person to use this many personal alarms. Why, you ask? Because he's human and therefore possesses only two hands. Twenty hands wouldn't be enough to count the number of objections I have to that objection. Oh... That looks heavy. I just realized there's a... Is there a bullet hole in that? So this is what a president wears, huh? It must be made of something super special. Mm, yes, yeah, to protect him from bullets. What? So it's not just for show? Mm, of course not. This is a bulletproof vest. Find a desk. Is a bullet lodged in it? Is it the president's? Interesting. Oh, so that's what one of those looks like. Why didn't you just say so? Now I feel so silly. You should. The documents of some kind. We could always steal a glance. Oh. Oh! Also covered in case amphibious assault, the president's safety is paramount. Spectator area should be covered at all times. Mm, another security plan. Oh yeah, like the one from the trash can. Mm, precisely. Wait, something feels off. Wait, hold on. Because I know that they switch positions, right? So the rooks... Yep, yeah, okay, so they switched because of his injury, which it noted. There's a lot of pawns. Are there any pawns... Here? Second night. Okay. Trying to look for any inconsistent. Ooh, they're, they're dated differently. March twenty fourth. That other one was March nineteenth. March nineteenth. Hmm. Is there anything else? Because there's also the existence of the pawns, which I don't feel like they were there.
Or in fact, they were on the opposite side. I don't know. There's like so many things I could deduce. And the date. Uh, I mean, the date is the one that stands out the most to me. trying to do here oh present Eureka! they're an obvious contradiction uh really oh all oh, right the ink here is smudged is that right ah oh, crap just kidding it's uh must be here right the printing's kind of off or something sorry mr edgeworth guess i need to learn how to banter better when giving feedback. Wow. No, it's it's not your fault, really. Let me look over this one more time. Really? Why wouldn't the date have anything to do with it? I guess I'm going to go with the fact that they're switched just because it's so, like, prominently displayed. Or did I not use the right... No, I don't really have anything. It's got to be that. The two plans are different. Was the security detail reorganized at some point? Uh, presumably between the 19th and 24th, but you didn't have never having none of that. Huh? Oh, you're right. Yeah, we made some last-minute changes yesterday. President's orders. Oh, the urgency. Because of what happened the day before, the killer here tried to take him down. He infiltrated the security detail, posed as one of us. Rook figured it out first, but not before the guy got within striking distance of the president. If our leader hadn't stepped in just then, we'd all have been out of a job. But he made it, and our friend here wound up with a seriously twisted arm. Rook put a bullet in it for good measure, too. And where were you while this was happening? I, I, uh... You were the first one I overpowered, were you not? Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Oh, now I get it. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get a heal. You've already forgotten who I am. I'm disappointed. It's you. Busted up my neck so bad I can't even look to my right. Ooh. Oh, so that's why they had to switch. That's also going to be important, too, I can tell. I was somewhat astonished to have sustained an injury at all. Testament to Mr. Rook's skill, he was truly a master of his craft. Unlike a certain other someone I could mention. <laughs> I'm just as good as he ever was. You were a pawn to his queen, my young friend. What the heck do you know? So that's why you, re you remembered Mr. Rook's name. You admired his skills as a bodyguard. Indeed, while I was serving on the team, I learned the names of all the operatives. But his in particular stayed with me. It joined the very short list of those who have ever successfully wounded me. So that's the connection he was talking about. And that's why we changed up the security plan. Had to be sure there weren't any more assassins in the ranks. The president didn't want anybody on stage he didn't trust, and he only trusts two people. Me and Rook. Oh. Okay. But... So that makes me wonder, why were the pawns, why would it have been wrong to present the pawns, or would that have been right? How does that exchange your, explain your change of position? Oh uh, yeah, he switched over to the right hand side, because he couldn't turn that way. I told you, I can't turn my neck to the right. I could only cover the president's left side. So I wound up moving to the right side of the stage. Okay. Knight can't turn his head to the right, so he was moved to the right side of the stage. Uh, what the heck are you? A curious figure of a curious animal with a curious expression is start staring straight at me. A curiously curious curio curiously cures. I don't know. I was going for a von karma foolishly foolishness. And ran out ran out of ways to use curiously. Hey look, there's a big lever right by its butt. Don't even think about it. Oh, uh, I... 
I wasn't thinking anything, I swear. I imagine the lover opens the panels beneath my feet. Do it! No, I see. So he's standing on a trap door. I strongly advise you not to pull it. Do so and you will regret it. You know, I'm okay with taking some advice, especially when it's from a professional killer. Uh, anything else here? Got you, got you, got you. Trap door? Nope. Alright, guess I should take a look at this dead body. Pretend I'm interested. No must have cowered the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Uh, like that. That's that's kind of weird. The bullet seems to have entered just under his armpit and went clean through his body. Bullet passed through the victim. Where did it end up? Oh, is that why everything, like, popped and... There's bullet holes in it. He was hit in an area his bulletproof vest didn't cover. So then why does the bulletproof vest have a bullet in it? Maybe it was the first bullet. I thought he was on purpose or something, huh? The cause of death would appear to be loss of blood. Attempts were made to staunch it, but to no avail. The victim bled to death from a gunshot wound to the torso. The bullet passed clean through his body. The medics must have been brought in to try and save him. Sadly, it was too little too late. Okay. Oh, it's a bulletproof attach case. Bodyguards use them to shield their clients from gunfire. There is some in case photograph too. Yep. Looks like Rook and Knight each had one. Wait. Bulletproof attached case. I don't organize. Designed to protect, provide protection from gunfire. Knight and Rook were each issued one. Oh, hey, that's the photo I snatched. You can hardly see a photo at a public event, Kay. But I'm snatching up a moment in time with every picture I take, you know? I take a snatch is your new favorite word. <laughs> Maybe. Hold on here. I wanted to go to my evidence. Where? Oh, I think it's under logic, actually. I don't want to actually put anything together. Can't turn his head to the right. And in that photo... No, he's still up. Okay. Uh, alright. Body in general. This is the victim, Mr. Bastion Rook. Bodyguard to the president of Jingfa. He's one of the guys that brought the president inside as soon as the shooting started. Which means he continued to do his duty right up until his dying breath. At least he'll get posthumously promoted? You know. Okay, it's better to know when to say nothing at all than to end up with your foot in your mouth. But what do you mean? I mean bodyguards don't even operate on the same rank promotion system as the police in the first place. Uh, shoes? Nope. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. So the victim was also carrying a revolver. Looks like he was trying to use it. He probably drew it on instinct when he felt threatened. We should check to see if he managed to fire any rounds off. Model 3, and there are no, and no signs of the weapon having been used. Was this one on loan from Jingfa too? Yeah, I'm sure it was. We're always issued with the same model gun. Six shot revolver on loan from Jing Fa has not been fired. Okay. Now I want to look at the other gun. Oh, am I not? Wait, hold on. Oh, I missed something. Then why isn't it crossed off like the other one? Oh, there we go. There's a trapdoor connected to the lever on that curious figure. If someone were to open it, everyone would fall through. Mr. Rook, Mr. The Killer. Don't even think about it. I, I, 
I wasn't. I mean, I wouldn't dream of thinking up ways to take you down. But I suggest you keep your monologues internal. Good call. Was that it? Yeah, okay. Uh, ooh, what are you? Someone has left an inflatable boat and an oar here. And probably someone's ready to go at any time. Wait, but there's only one oar. You can still row with one oar, you know. Ooh. There's a wide selection of protective equipment here. Bulletproof vests, hazmat gear. No way, there's even a spacesuit. You get the sense that the president thinks he's very much in need of protection at all costs. But what if he was in a gunfight and there was poison gas everywhere and he was in space? What would he do then, huh? And then he simply put on the bulletproof vest, the hazmat gear, and the spacesuit. That's uh, probably easier said than done. The president is on the other side of this door. And what a door it is. Bet I could get the better of it, though. Get the better of it. Doors aren't there to be beaten. But look how heavy it is. Look at that lock. It's just sitting there begging for me to try it. Calm down, Kane. Think. Why might this door be locked? Um, for me to open it, of course. Precisely for you to open it, of course. Wait. What is the right answer, anyway? It's a bank of monitors displaying camera feeds from in and around the plane. Oh. You must go to the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Uh, all of them, but mostly this one of us. This monitor is displaying a feed from this very room. They didn't go cheap when they bought these, huh? Very high res. Oh, I'm afraid I can't quite sell myself, but... I can even see the little crow's feet around your eyes. Ooh. Uh, my bad. They're just the usual deeply etched lines, you know, on your forehead. If you've quite finished. The heck is that? What on earth is this? Oh, that? It's the president's favorite plushie. It's a memento of uh, something. Anyway, don't touch it. But if that's the case, then why has it been... Left up there like nobody cares about it? Yeah, that is pretty weird. It certainly wouldn't be the first place I would think to display a beloved item. Wait, are those shards of glass underneath it? Something seems strange about this cubby hole, but now I'm sure of it. There's almost certainly another monitor here. Ooh. Screen showing footage from in and around the aircraft. One monitor is missing. Ooh, what about this one? These monitors are displaying the cockpit and parts of the plane's exterior, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Even the one that's not working at all? That's the outside of the plane. Most intruders could not hope to approach without being spotted, but such measures would be mere child's play in my case. Wow, you're saying you can get past cameras like these without being seen? Of course, with these. You have to teach me how. Please, are you taking on apprentices by any chance? Okay, you do realize who you're talking to, don't you? I, uh, sorry. Had to ask, though. What a great skill for a great thief to know. Unfortunately for you, I'm not the type to take on understudies. You're not, huh? Shame. Shame? In what way, exactly? Alright, feel like I've got all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what li Okay, what do you have to say? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh... The sidekicks are all... <laughs> it's hard work being somebody's trusted sidekick. I don't remember ever asking you to be one. And how come you get to do all the detectiving and have all the fun? It's no fair. I don't remember becoming a detective either. But you've got the brains for it. All you're missing is a pipe in your hand. I'm not sure I know what we're talking about anymore. Are you kidding? We're talking about how to be the perfect sidekick. Maybe I should keep a database where I can store all the vital information we find. But then I'd just be doubling up on what you already do, huh? I should never have bothered asking. Okay. Um, hmm. Do I have any logic I can put together? Uh, 
the desk has a bolt lodged in it. Is it the president? Rick's gun. Six shot revolver on loan from Jing Fa has not been found in the trash can. Not easy to acquire in this country. Hmm. The bullet passed through the victim. Where did it end up? Knight can't turn his head to the right, so he's moved to the right side of the stage. Did it pass through him? Because is it the president's? If so, is that where the bullet that went through the body ended up? Yeah, there we go. Okay. The two bullets were fired in total. We know this because two shots were heard. One traveled through the flag and into the balloon. The other took Mr. Rook's life. But there's a bullet in the president's vest too, right? How is that possible? Because it passed through the body. No, oh, indeed. The numbers don't add up. However, there is one possible explanation. There is? After passing through his body, the bullet that took Mr. Rook's life then found itself lodged in the vest. In other words, two of our bullets were in fact one. No way! He's right. If the president hadn't been wearing that vest, things could have been a lot worse. He wasn't injured at all by the impact. Even when obstructed by a vest, the bullet can inflict serious damage. Sure, I've known guys who got broken bones that way. But the president's okay. He may, he's made of strong stuff. Sounds like he didn't even need a vest. Let's not get carried away here. You want that bullet's ballistic markings analyzed? Um, remind me what those are again? Guns leave a unique pattern of grooves on every bullet they fire. By examining these grooves, we can use them to identify which gun it came from. Think of them as fingerprints of a sort. You can tell that from a bullet? Then what are we waiting for? Analyze them! It might be easier said than done. That bullet hit solid armor. The impact will have completely flattened it. You'll be lucky if there's anything left for forensics to find. What? But I was all set for some analyzing. Not the bullet that passed through the victim. The bullet itself was crushed flat by impact. Uh, I didn't do it. I, I'm a reporter. I bag scoops, not souls. Oh, but then we'll, uh, why lie about your jacket and the laser sight? Uh, that was uh, just uh, me. I would think it was fishy. Is that really all it was? Please, you gotta believe me, I could never do something like this. I'd like to tell you everything will be alright, but just try not to worry too much. If you really are innocent, I'll prove it one way or another. Thanks, Chief, I believe in you. How many times must I tell you I am not your Chief? Oh, uh, sorry, Ruffles. Clean forgot you were Chief number two. That's not what I meant. <sighs> that didn't help at all. Hopes for your investigation. I do hope you won't betray my trust in you. Things are progressing well, I hope. There's no need to worry. Things are progressing just fine. Remember, I absolutely despise betrayals of all kinds. Yes, I know. Indeed you do, so please do take care not to double-cross me, accidentally or otherwise. <laughs> I really have no choice but to do as he says for now. Can't believe I let an assassin onto the president's plane. You know very well it was for the good of the investigation, Mr. Knight. Don't give me that. I know what you really want. You do indeed, because you heard me say it already. I wish to know the truth behind Mr. Rook's death. But you did also say you were asked to assassinate the president by a certain someone. 
You seem to have forgotten that there are more pressing matters at hand. I don't often carry out unpaid work, but it's not entirely unheard of. Fine, I'll get back to the investigation. Good, I'm expecting great things from you, Mr. Edgeworth. That didn't help at all. The only thing I can think to put together here is Rook's gun looks an awful lot like that gun. So is what we're getting at is that it was someone on Are there other people who ha are on security detail? Two guns are exactly the same, meaning it's likely that the one we found is also from Jingfa. Same bottle as the victims. Yup. Bodyguards all got their guns from the Jingfa authorities, right? Yes. Are they like super rare or anything? No, I don't believe so. This metal isn't exactly easy to come by in this country, but it's certainly not impossible either. Boo, and here I thought they might be valuable treasures. Yes, it is something of a shame. Oh, I just mentioned treasures and you actually responded for once. I really want to point out that if the guns were rare, it would be much easier to trace them. Which would have made them treasures of the evidence variety, I suppose. Ha! See, everything's a treasure hunt one way or another, including this investigation. You could say that. All right then, it's treasure hunting time. On with the investigation. She certainly seems a lot more enthusiastic all of a sudden. That's quite enough investigating for now. Oh. What is taking so long, Detective Gumshoe? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, have you solved the case? No, not yet. Is that so? Perhaps interviewing another key witness might help you do so. Another witness? Who? Y you don't mean... The most important witness of all, the man on the other side of that door. He really intends to have me question the president? Now, if you'd be so kind as to summon him, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop right there to kill her. You're nuts if you think I'd let him anywhere near you. Well, Mr. President, I'm sure you are watching us through your security feed, aren't you? In which case, I politely request that you show yourself. That is, if you value your bodyguard's life. Oh. Well then, if nothing else, we know now what kind of man you really are. Uh, m m Mr. President! Stop, you can't do this. Let's all just calm down, alright? Come on, detective. Where the blazes are you? Eek! The lights! What's happening? Oh... Listen well, Mr. Edgeworth. I would advise you to stay very still. It seems I will not be granted my audience with the President after all. Even with Mr. Knight's life as my bargaining chip. No, stop! Eek! Okay, you won't get away with this to kill her. I've seen enough and now I know the truth. Where are you? Where did you go? The rest in your capable hands, Mr. Edgeworth. Ah! Earth. Sir Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Oh. <laughs> All right, that seems like a great place to call that episode. All right, that that got a little bit more intense as we went along. Uh, it seems to killer's not playing around anymore. Hope you're all enjoying this. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.